Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Worship Drumming. This is a channel to learn some of the most popular worship songs on the drums, and in today's video, we'll be going over Reckless Love by Corey Osbury. Now, before we get started, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed. I'm up to like 45 subscribers now. I know that doesn't sound like a lot compared to some of the channels that have like 2 to 3 million subscribers, but I'm just so thankful for everyone who has subscribed to me and it really just drives me to put out more content for you guys. Also, I reached a thousand views on one of my videos. It was the uh, drum tutorial for Glorious Day by Passion. And like I said, when these numbers go up, it really uh, drives me more to put out more good quality content for you guys. And this song that we're doing today has been gaining a lot of popularity, so I figured it's probably about time to go over it. So I'm gonna go ahead, raise the camera, and we'll get into it. So the most important thing about this song is that it's played in 6-8 timing. If you don't know what 6-8 timing is, basically we're going to be counting to 6 instead of 4. I really encourage you guys to go learn what 6-8 timing is if you don't know about it. I'll probably make a dedicated video because a lot of really great songs are played in 6-8 timing. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into this. So starting at the intro, there's a few things you need that I don't have. Such as, you're going to need brushes, which I don't have, I just have normal sticks. You're going to need pretty much an acoustic snare drum, which I don't have. Also, you're gonna need a tambourine, but that's not until a little bit later after the intro. Which, I don't have a tambourine, but a hi-hat is sometimes a decent substitute. So if you're like me, and you have the situation where you don't necessarily have all these things, I'll show you how to play it the way I'm just, I do it whenever I play it. And I'll show you kind of, I'll just run through a quick brief overview of how you would do it with brushes and acoustic drum. If you have brushes and an acoustic drum, pretty much what he's doing, and this isn't gonna be exact, this is just a good way to get you started, is you're gonna alternate back and forth between your hands, just going one and two and three and four and five and six and. Make sure you're accenting that four with the brush uh, with your right hand or whichever hand you have leading. Then you're gonna play some light kick drums on beat one and that's pretty much it. So it's just one and two and three and four and five and six and. Pretty simple, he does add some slides in there and some other little things, but it's just a good thing to get you started. Now, the way I do it, since I don't have all the stuff that I need for it, is I'll just keep time over here on my floor tom, I'll still play my kick drum on one, and then I will play my snare drum here on four, but it's just not going to be very loud. So, over here I'm counting my six, the fours here on the snare drum, the ones here on the kick. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Pretty simple. It's just your basic six eight groove. Just moved over here to the floor tom. I'll go ahead and plug some for you guys. I'll start talking about the chorus. So after the intro there, we're gonna go into the chorus. This first chorus is really simple. Um, it'll get a little complicated later in the chorus, but right now it's real simple. All you're gonna do is you're gonna take your right hand off the floor tom and move it up here to the body of your ride cymbal. Now this is when he starts playing the tambourine on beat four. So you can play it on beat four if you want. You can just play your hi-hat, or you can just continue those light hits on your snare drum there. What I like to do is this beat is going to be carried out through this chorus and then there's going to be a little interlude section, instrumental, whatever you want to call it, before we go into the verse. So what I like to do is during the chorus I'll play the snare drum real light and then as we go into that little instrumental I'll start playing the fours here on the hi-hat. And that kind of will give us a nice way to die down as we go into the verse. Oh, let me go ahead and plug that up for you guys and show you what it sounds like. One thing I forgot to mention about while you're playing the chorus is uh, play that crash cymbal on some of those ones, not all of them. Just play where you feel it needs to be. And you can even do like little swells if you want leading into that count of one. So after we have that instrumental section, the drums are gonna die out and we're gonna wait for two bars until we come back in. Now it's important to count these to yourself because no other instruments are really assisting us into keeping the time. 
So to yourself, you just need to count one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six drums. So when we come in, we have this kick and snare pattern that we're gonna carry out through this verse and we're gonna carry it out through the next chorus and then the very last chorus. So it's important to get this down. So the kick and snare pattern I'll show you first and then we'll start adding the hi-hats into this verse. So the kick and snare pattern is made up of two bars. The first bar, your kick drum is played on one, your snare drum is played on four, and your kick drum is played on the and of six. So that bar alone would be one, two, three, four, five, six, and. The next bar follows with the one with the kick drum immediately after the and of six of the last bar. And then after that, we have the and of two is also played on the kick drum, and then the four is played on the snare drum. I'll go through this, but don't worry, I'm gonna slow it down and show you guys it all together as a whole. Second bar would be one, two, and three, four, five, six. So all together, if you put it together, sometimes it's easier to look at it as one big bar of music because you have those two kick drums that kind of glue those bars together. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, and three, four, five, six. Now you don't necessarily have to play that and of six there. He's kind of doing it as just like an accent uh, for the song. It's not, you know, it's not real big and boomy, but you can tell it's there. So let me go ahead and run through that one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, and three, four, five, six. One last tip, when you're doing that and of six and the one there, I find it easy to play that as a double. Now, it's hard to do it slow, but once you do it up to speed, playing that double there on the and of six and the one, it, it really helps me out when I do it. I don't play it like, I don't try to just put two quick ones there. I always just play it as a double. Now let's talk about the hi-hat and kind of how this verse is gonna go. So this verse is gonna be broken up into two different sections. We will have our first section, which will be pretty much hardly any hi-hats. And we'll have our second section, which adds a lot more hi-hat. So, like I said, we're gonna wait for those two bars before we come in. And when we come in, we're gonna have a nice big sizzle on the hi-hat with the kick drum on beat one. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. And then just make sure you have that hi-hat closed by the time you hit that snare drum on beat four. You can even close it on there at the same time. That's usually what I do. And so then you're just carrying out that kick and snare pattern without any hi-hat. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, and three, four, five, six. You're just playing that kick and snare pattern and for a little bit. And then we're gonna sort of end the section with another hi-hat sizzle. But this time it's gonna be on beat four with our snare drum. Open it up with that big hi-hat sizzle and then we're gonna close it on another sizzle. But uh, just, I'll, I'll kind of do it real quick. I'm not gonna play all the bars in between it. I'll kind of just show you what I mean. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, and three, four, five, six. Now, like I said, you're not gonna hit that hi-hat on that next bar with four. You're, like I said, you're gonna play that kick and snare pattern and then end it with that open sizzle there on four with the snare drum. I was just showing you kind of like what I mean by how you're gonna open and close the beat with it. So let me go ahead and show you what that sounds like and then we'll get into sort of the second half of what's going on here. So once you end with that hi-hat sizzle, we're gonna go into playing all our eighth notes on the hi-hat. So it's just gonna be one and two and three and four and five and six and. Still keeping that same kick and snare pattern we had from earlier. One and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and. So just same kick and snare pattern, just playing all your eighth notes on the hi-hat. And if it's easier for you, you don't have to add that and a six here. I think, I'm not sure, but I do believe that he drops it at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and show you kind of what this whole verse as a whole is gonna kind of sound like.
So after that verse, we're gonna go into the chorus. The chorus, we're gonna keep that same kick and snare pattern, doing the one, the and of six, the next one, and the and of two. Snare drum still falling on four, but now all we're doing is we're just playing the body of our ride cymbal, just, you know, so now we're doing the same thing, we're just doing it with one hand keeping time. So it makes it a little easier than trying to have both hands. So that's just all that this next chorus is gonna be. One, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, and three, four, five, six. Go ahead and play that for you guys, and then we'll get into the bridge. Right after that chorus, there's gonna be another small instrumental just like after the last chorus. Just go ahead and keep carrying out that same chorus groove that you're playing. Next, we're gonna go into the bridge. And now the bridge is where things are gonna get a little complicated. By the way, you can kind of play this however you want. You can experiment with different things and just, as long as you're doing something on the toms and still playing in 6-8, you're gonna be fine. So it's gonna be broken up into two sections. There's sort of the first section where we're gonna have some kind of spaced out hits. And then we're gonna start keeping time on our floor tom. We're gonna to add a lot more of our hits in with our left hand. Kind of like what we did earlier in the verse. Anyways, let's go ahead and start with the first half here. There's gonna be four total bars making up this first half. The first two bars, you're gonna play just the way you were doing it earlier um, with the kick and snare pattern. But we're gonna modify it just a little bit. The first bar is gonna be one on our kick drum. Our four is gonna fall on our rack tom and our floor tom. And then still playing that and of six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and. Now we go to the second bar. We're still gonna start with our one on the kick drum. And we're gonna play our four on the rack tom and floor tom. But this time, we're not adding the and of two on the kick drum. So together, those two bars would be one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Like I said, just what we did earlier, we're moving our hands here to the toms. We're gonna take out that and of two on our kick drum. Now, we're gonna basically play those same two bars but next time, we're gonna add the and of two on our kick drum, and we're going to play a small fill on our floor tom. And don't worry, I'm gonna go over this once again as a whole. So after you play those two bars, the next two bars are is that same kick and snare pattern you played earlier, but now we're just gonna add a little floor tom thing in. Now it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, and three, four, five and six and. So once you get to the end there, after you play that four, you're gonna play five and six and on your floor tom. Then you're gonna start back at that first bar. So all together, it would be like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, and three, four, five, and six, and. Now you're gonna do those bars, you're gonna do that, I believe it's twice before we start picking up and we're gonna start playing all out. Let me go ahead and show you what that's gonna sound like and I'll even put what bar I'm on up there on the screen. Now we're gonna start picking this groove up a lot and it's gonna be actually simpler than what we were doing earlier. So our right hand is gonna keep time on our floor tom. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
kick drum is going to land on all the ones. You can still play those and of sixes if you want. Then you're going to play your rack tom on the and of two and your snare drum on four. So let's break down what we have so far. One, two, and three, four. And then we're going to play five and six and on our floor tom, just like we did earlier. And so that's the entire groove right there, but we are going to add a little variation. But let me run over that real quick before I do the variation of it. One, two, and three, four, five, and six, and one, two, and three, four, five, and six, and. Now the variation that he adds in here is a triplet played on beat six. Now you don't necessarily have to do this, it does get a little complicated. So let me show you what he's doing. So a triplet is just three notes played within a beat. So between beat six and the beat of one, we're gonna squeeze in three notes there. So all that triple would be six and a. Uh. So now, whenever you go to beat one, your left hand is gonna play beat one. Five and six and a uh, one. So now our left hand has played the one on the quarter note and now it's like our left hand is leading. But we need to fix that because we need to keep our right hand here leading on the floor tom, counting all the quarter notes because our left hand still needs to play the rack tom and snare drum. So how we're gonna correct that is after we play that beat one with our left hand, start on beat two with our right hand for our next hit. Because earlier we've been doing five and six and, and so you know our left hand's been falling in between all those playing the ands. But now that it's leading, all we're gonna do is we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's all your hands are doing. So let me show you kind of, let me go ahead and kind of break it down for you. One, two, and three, four, five, and six, and a one, two, and three, four, five, and six. Next, we have a build that we're gonna do to get out of the bridge and go into the last chorus. So the build that we're gonna do is gonna be for just one measure, and it's just gonna be one, two, three, four, so that's just using your snare drum and your floor tom playing all those quarter notes. One, two, three, four. And then we're gonna play five and six and on our snare drum. So it's just alternating right, left, right, left. Five and six and, and then crashing in on one. Let me go ahead and plug that up for you guys so you can see kind of how it's supposed to go. Now guys, I'm not gonna play this last chorus for you just because we basically have already done it. I will kind of show you some fills and stuff here in a second. So the last chorus, you're just playing exactly what you did during the second chorus. You know, you're keeping that kick and snare pattern, but this time you're gonna play a washi ride cymbal instead of playing the body of your ride cymbal. I will go ahead and tap it out for you still. One, two, three, four, five, six and one, two and three, four, five, six. Now, this is something that I usually don't do, which is talk about fills, but I figured I might as well start trying to do that. So let me go ahead and talk about two fills that you can throw into this song that sound really good. So they're both gonna start on B5. They're both the exact same sticking, just different voices on the drum. The first one is gonna be five and six and. So that's snare drum on five, rack tom on the and of five, and then the six and the and of six played on the floor tom there. So it's one, two, three, four, five and six and. It's a real nice fill to throw in there. The next one, we are going to play five on the rack tom, the and of five on the rack tom, six on the floor tom, and the and of six on the floor tom. One, two, three, four, five, and six, and. Go ahead and play part of the song, and then I'll throw those fills in there so you get an idea of how they sound with the song.
So there's a song for you guys. Sorry about me teaching that bridge. It is one of the more complex things that I've taught and it is kind of hard to explain. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please subscribe below if you're interested in more content like you saw in the video today. Leave a thumbs up if you learned something new and I'll see you guys in the next video.